All right, so what we've all been waiting for, this yes. next wonderful woman needs no introduction. And I will tell you, I don't think there is anyone bigger, better, badder, risk taker, ceiling breaker than this woman to lead us on this incredible, important issue. Um, I'm incredibly proud to have her here in Reno, Nevada, and there's no one that can probably take her place um, in anything that she does. So, you get the honors. Please welcome our 49th Vice President, Madam Vice President Kamala Harris. <laughs> witnessed the highest court in our land, the United States Supreme Court, the court of Thurgood, take a constitutional right that had been recognized from the people of America, from the women of America. And following that, we predicted it might happen, and it has, Laws are being proposed around our country by extremist so-called leaders that would criminalize health care providers, literally providing for jail time for health care providers. Laws that would punish women. Laws that don't even make an exception for the the violence and violation of rape and incest. And you know, I, I, my career, a lot of my career I spent as a courtroom prosecutor specializing in crimes against women and children. And the idea that laws would be passed providing no exception for rape and incest by people who consider themselves and want to be called leaders, don't they understand that this individual that would be the subject of that restriction has just survived an incredible violation of their body. And then you would put in place a law that after that happens would further deprive them of the liberty and the right to make decisions about their own body? So we have to understand also the experience that people are having every day in our country right now Many people are having an experience where they feel completely alone and without support and feel that they are being judged as though they've done something wrong. So this is all very real. And, um, and we have to hear them and see them even though they may not have the ability to be on the local news every night. We have to know what's happening and feel um, a responsibility to stand up. One does not have to or need to abandon their faith or deeply held beliefs to agree the government should not be telling her what to do. not about attempting to convert people away from their beliefs and their faith. It's simply saying the government shouldn't be doing this. It's up to her. And if she chooses with her priest or her pastor or her rabbi or whomever, but not the government and not these people who are passing these laws who half of them don't even know how women's bodies work. <laughs> But what, what can you do here in Nevada? Do everything that we always know we need to do when we're talking about a national movement. And that means I'm looking at the students in particular and the young leaders here. Use your, your brilliant ability to communicate and to organize to large numbers of people, to keep talking about this issue. Use your ability through social media to tell your peer groups, because by the way, the largest cohort that will be affected by this are college-age women. Absolutely. And so use your ability 
to just remind people they're not alone. Use your ability to talk to large numbers of people to say, you won't be judged, you have rights, we will stand with you, we will stand for your rights. Um, and then it's also, look, elections matter. So on the issue of gun violence, uh, a report came out recently, the most recent report. Gun violence is the number one killer of children in America. Number one killer of children in America is gun violence. One in five Americans knows someone who died because of gun violence. One in five. Think about that. I was in um, Nashville, Tennessee recently. Um, it was the, I went the day after they expelled, tried to expel, two members of the Tennessee Three and um, the Justins in their 20s. Um, and, you know, I'm sure everybody's familiar with what happened there, but they were, those, those legislators, the three of them, were simply trying to discuss and require debate on the issue of reasonable gun safety laws. And unlike here, the majority of the legislature there doesn't have the kind of courage the majority of the legislature has here. And so what happened, because it is definitely a, I was gonna say a word I shouldn't say, but it was a move <laughs> that, um, that was not a, a courageous move. They, they, they basically, they turned off the microphones. They literally turned off the microphones on these legislators trying to debate the issue of gun safety laws. Like, I don't know, the gun safety law that says that we might want to think about banning assault weapons because they're weapons of war. <laughs> background checks because you might want to know if someone is red flag laws. Yeah. Let's let people and families speak on these issues. And they turned off their microphones, which is so symbolic of what's happening on this issue in the debate. So you don't even want to have the discussion. Because to have the discussion would mean that you're going to have to speak to Sandy Hook Uvalde, what happened in Las Vegas on October 1? They turned off the mics. Mm -hmm. The trauma, the undiagnosed trauma that our students are facing because of this issue. And then you look at the statistics that most recently came out. We must act on this. We must act on this. And again, it's a false choice to suggest you're either in favor of the Second Amendment or reasonable gun safety laws. I want him in favor of both. We have to remember, you know, there's a, um, a saying that Coretta Scott King had that I'll paraphrase that I, I love and I say it a lot. She said famously, the fight for civil rights, which insert the right, the fight for justice, the fight for equality, the fight for fairness, the fight for civil rights must be fought and won with each generation. And I think she had two points. One is that it is the very nature of the gains that we make that they will not be permanent unless, and here's the second point, we are vigilant in fighting to maintain them and to maintain our standards for what makes for a civil society where people's rights, including the right to be safe, the right to have certain fundamental freedoms are intact. And so again, let's, this is not a time to throw up our hands, this is a time to roll up our sleeves.